Okay, so in this video we'll continue our discussion of blood flow and circulation. In the last two videos we talked about the local intrinsic control of blood flow and we talked about the hormonal extrinsic control of blood flow. Uh, a quick uh, uh, review with the local intrinsic control of blood flow, we talked about examples of local control uh, including autoregulation, active hyperemia, and reactive hyperemia. We also talked under the local control about the mechanism which explain local control of blood flow, including myogenic hypothesis and the metabolic hypothesis. In the second video, we had reviewed the hormonal extrinsic control of blood flow, uh, including sympathetic innervation of vascular smooth muscle. We talked about other vas uh, vasoactive hormones, including histamines and bradykinin, which causes uh, arterial dilation. We also talked about serotonin and prostaglandins. And uh, in the prostaglandins, we talked about four important ones, including the prostacyclines and the E-series, which are vasodilators. And I had stressed that these are vasodilators, and then the other two are F-series and the thromboxin A2, which are vasoconstrictors. Okay, now let's move on to talk about the coronary circulation, which is our third topic here, where we also will cover the cerebral circulation. Let's start by talking about the coronary circulation. So coronary circulation is controlled almost entirely by local metabolic factors, which I will mention very uh, soon. Uh, it also exhibits autoregulation. Our heart exhibits autoregulation, and the circulation is autoregulated. What does that mean? It means it regulates itself. Auto is self. Coronary circulation also exhibits active and reactive hyperemia, which we discussed under the uh, uh, examples of local control in the first video. Okay, now uh, the most important local uh, uh, metabolic factors are hypoxia and adenosine. I put it here twice, hypoxia and adenosine. Okay, so let me give you an example. So for example, if we have increase in myocardial contractility, which is accompanied by increased demand for O2, in order to meet the demand compensatory vasodilation of coronary vessels, okay, so we will need vasodilations of the coronary vessels as a compensatory mechanism for this uh, increased demand and uh, this occurs and accordingly both blood flow and O2 delivery to the contracting heart muscles which is here increases okay so let's just say this in another word so if we have increased myocardial contractility we're going to need to compensate and by delivering more O2 and uh, uh, contracting and that happens using the compensatory mechanism of vasodilation of coronary vessels, okay? And again, the most important metabolites are hypo hypoxia and adenosine. Okay, moving right along, we will talk about during systole, we have mechanical compression of the coronary vessels, okay? The coronary vessels, they are compressed to reduce the blood flow. So during systole, which is the contraction, okay? Mechanical compression of the coronary vessels reduces blood flow. Okay, after that period of occlusion, blood flow increases in order to repay the O2 debt, which is the reactive hyperemia that I've been talking about. Okay, uh, finally, the last point that we need to talk about here in coronary circulation is that sympathetic, sympathetic nerves play a minor role in, the, in, in this interaction. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about uh, cerebral circulation. Okay. In cerebral circulation, uh, it's controlled almost entirely by local uh, metabolic factors, okay? So the local metabolic factors that are the most important are, or is, the most important factor, only there's one, is the CO2, okay? It also exhibits autoregulation, such as we saw in the coronary circulation. It exhibits, ex similar to coronary circulation, also active and reactive hyperemia, okay? I'm going to re-stress the point that the most important lake local vasodilator for the cerebral circulation is CO2, okay? Let's, let's kind of uh, understand that a little bit more. So if we have increased in CO2 pressure or PCO2, that causes vasodilation, here, vasodilation in the cerebral arterioles, okay? And that increases blood flow to the brain, okay? Because if we have a lot of CO2 and... Uh, uh, we need more vasodilation to the brain in order to provide uh, oxygen and uh, nutrients that are needed for the brain, such as glucose. Okay. Uh, also, such as in circulatory, uh, we, the sympathetic nerves play only a minor role here. Uh, vasoactive substances 
uh, in the systemic circulation have has like little or no effect uh, on the cerebral circulation because these substances are excluded by the blood-brain barrier, which we talked about uh, when we discussed the capillaries uh, in the brain, uh, and we said how these capillaries uh, have the endothelial cells. They're very exceptionally uh, tight. Okay. Uh, this concludes our uh, discussion of, of both uh, coronary circulation and cerebral circulation. I uh, appreciate your feedback. Thank you.